40% increase in users, 37% increase in sessions, and I didn't do shit for SEO to achieve this. What do I mean by no SEO needed? As you know, SEO boils down to creating content, building links, content and links, links and content, content and links until you explode. I did none of that. Yet somehow we were able to generate 502 articles without AI and attracting, and I shit you not, 800 referring domains, including these giga chat links from DR96, Microsoft, GitHub, and freaking Google themselves. My agency, The Search Initiative, did this by using programmatic SEO. Programmatic SEO, also known as PSEO, is a way to create landing pages at scale by using automated tools. You ever seen Realtor.com? If you were to search for houses for sale in Los Angeles, you'd find a landing page like this. If you were to search for houses for sale in New York, you'd find this bad boy. Yes, I know, they look exactly the same. Realtor has 19,000 of these pages for every single city in the US. These were all created programmatically. And this isn't just useful for real estate and e-commerce business, it's super powerful for any type of website, including content sites, which I'll show you soon. And in this video, you're gonna learn how to do it. By the way, if you think this is gonna be too technical for you, fear not. I failed out of computer science in my first semester at uni. If I can do it, you can for sure. Plus, I'm gonna be giving you my exact tools and templates so you can just copy it for yourself. But before I get started, I wanna let you know that my agency, The Search Initiative, is taking on a handful of clients right now for $1,000 off their first month in exchange for a testimonial download the road. We've actually never once lowered prices since we formed seven years ago. Just head on over to thesearchinitiative.com, put in your deets into the form, and we'll get right back to you. All right, so let's take a look at the client situation and why we needed to do programmatic SEO in the first place. The client runs a software supply chain management company. If you're building a complex piece of software with multiple tools and code languages, their platform helps you project manage the whole thing. Their cheapest subscription starts at $4,000 a month. Sounds like they were killing it, right? Wrong. The only keyword that their website ranked for was their brand name. That's it. To put that into perspective, if my website Diggity Marketing only ranked for Diggity Marketing, traffic would drop from 100,000 visitors per month to a lousy 300 per month. The client had big goals, so we knew that ranking one or two pages wasn't gonna cut it. We needed thousands. Enter programmatic SEO. Traditional SEO focuses on growing long-term search traffic by producing high-quality, unique content. Programmatic SEO achieves the same thing, but faster because you're automatically printing multiple pages at a time based on a template and making each page unique by leveraging readily available data. The mega affiliate site NerdWallet programmatically generates these cost of living comparison pages that index for every combination of cities you could put in. Lesser known content site NomadList generates these data packed pages for every digital bromad hotspot in the world. Zapier has a mega trove of programmatically built out pages for every single tool they work with. This is what they look like. Wise has a programmatic landing page for every single currency conversion. Do you think they built these by hand themselves? There's 44,000 of these. And according to Ahrefs, they bring in eight million visitors per month. Here's TripAdvisor doing that thing with an automatically populated best hotels in Japan page. Now, I'm about to start to teach you how to do this for yourself, but first let me lay out some pros and cons of programmatic SEO. First, the pros. Scale. Would you rather write 500 pages one by one or blast them out with a single button press? Obviously that saves you time and money. No writers, no editors, no uploaders, just pure code. You'll also hit topical authority fast. If you can cover every digital nomad city in the world, you become the topical authority on digital nomad hotspots. And lastly, the backlink potential is huge. Considering the amount of pages you're creating, the chances of earning backlinks exponentially increases. We earned freaking 800 free links for this client. Now, the cons. If you wanna do something fancy like what G2 does for their software A versus software B programmatic articles, you need to bring a dev on with some coding skills. That said, if you wanna do something simple like I'll show you later, a moron could pull it off. I'm speaking from personal experience. Also, since programmatic SEO depends on the data you feed it, if you have bad data, you have bad content. Garbage in, garbage out. And lastly, because you're relying on automation, that could cause you to overlook nuanced SEO opportunities, like custom internal link sculpting or some other nerdy shit. Okay, so now you're like, con schmoz, just go ahead and teach me. Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so step one is finding a set of scalable, similar keywords in your niche that you can programmatically cover on your site. Let's say you had a site in the vegan niche. Head over to Ahrefs Keyword Explore and type something like vegan restaurants. Then change these settings, keyword difficulty 20 or less, 
and then only show me terms where DR30 sites, aka weenie sites, are at the top of Google. I think you can see the pattern. Here's 176 best vegan restaurants in city name keywords that can be dominated easy with programmatic SEO. Let's understand how to break these keywords down. If we look at the keyword best vegan restaurants in Chicago, the best vegan restaurants part is called the head term, the part that doesn't change from page to page. The Chicago part is the modifier, the part that does change. For a travel website, you might have things to do head term in Chicago modifier as a keyword. You can niche down even further by modifying with the target audience with the secondary modifier for couples. Next, you need to identify the search intent for your keyword set. What kind of content does Google like to see? If I Google the top result for best vegan restaurants in Chicago, I get this. A listicle that has the restaurant name, address, telephone number, URL, and a short description for each restaurant. Now you know you'll need that data as well. Speaking of data, where do you find it? Google Dataset Search is a great resource for free data sets. It combines data from a number of different providers. Just search for a topic that's relevant to your website and find a suitable data set. Kaggle is pretty dope as well. You can search for something like life expectancy data and you can get a sense for how good the data is by how many times it's been downloaded and the relevant score. Then there's also government databases like data.gov with nearly 300,000 free data sets. So now that you got some data, now what? How do you turn numbers into content? I'm gonna show you how to do this with a simple Google Sheet and the life expectancy in country example. And to make things even easier, you can download my sample sheet by using the link in the description. I'm gonna build my keyword list by asking ChatGPT to list off every country on the planet and then adding the words life expectancy in to the front. Then I'm gonna dump these guys into Ahrefs keyword research tool, then export into my sheet's first tab named keyword data. Note that I only have 10 countries here because you get the freaking idea, it's an example. Damn it. This second tab is the data that you've downloaded from Kaggle. Easy enough. And the third tab is the actual content, URL name, title, all the stuff that can be uploaded to your site. For example, it generated the content, India is a developing country with a life expectancy of 68.3 and a total population of 139 blah 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 blah. Here's some more information about India blah blah blah. If I click on the main content cell for India, you can see that it used these complicated formulas to form these sentences from the data. How did I figure out these formulas? I didn't. ChatGPT GPT did, of course. I gave it a prompt like this and it took care of the rest. Since we're on the topic of how lazy we can get, let's programmatically build out the metadata. Column C creates the URL slug with the simple chat GPT given formula that puts dashes between the words of the keyword. Column D creates the title tag and HTML code and adds the domain name of the website at the end. Column E creates the H1 tag similarly, and column F creates the meta description. Find out everything you need to know about the life expectancy in blank. Now it's time to get the data and content in this sheet up on your website and programmatically creating all 100 billion of your pages. Again, if you're trying to do something complex like what G2 created, then you'll need some help from a dev. But for something more simple, you can use the WP All Import plugin. Once you've installed the plugin, go to Upload File, and you're gonna create a new post for each quote record in your data file. This next screen shows a sanity check on the data. Yes, India is a country, thank you very much. Then, just like what we did with the sheet, you can create your template here from within the tool. Confirm and run your import, and then faster than it will take you to say SEO is dead, all your posts will be created in your CMS and this is what it will effectively look like. Now before you get your panties in a bunch, I know very damn well that this example is not enough to rank on Google. It's an example for God's sake, but it doesn't take much more to get it Google ready. See this programmatically generated page for finding a mover in Brighton? Here's another page in Bristol. What's the difference? Just the name of the city. So as you can see, you just need to get enough filler content and graphics in your template, pull in a review feed from Trustpilot for example, while sprinkling in as much uniqueness as you can with your data. I also wanna talk about internal linking, which is significantly more important than traditional SEO because you're publishing so much content at once. You need to help Google's crawler with a nudge so it can index and find all these pages. For my life expectancy example, we siloed our country pages based on continents. So this Asia page links down to all the countries in Asia and the countries link up to the continent. This is all done programmatically. You also want an XML sitemap which tells Google, yo, I got all these pages on my site, don't miss any of them. I use the automatically generated sitemap included in the Rank Math WordPress SEO plugin and then submit it in Google Search Console. Overall, with a single programmatic effort, we were able to generate over 500 pages of content for our client, which resulted in a 38% increase in sessions. The number of keywords they ranked for in the top 10 went from zero to 1,923. The number of organic links that came in reached nearly 800, of which Microsoft, GitHub, and Google themselves were part of that link set. If you'd like us to take a look at your SEO, head on over to thesearchinitiative.com and use the form at the bottom to reach out. We'd be happy to take a look at your site and let you know what we can do for you.